Every year, millions of beach lovers visit Malta, but this group of snorkelers have come for more than just fun. They're here for a free guided tour by Malta's National Aquarium to learn more about local marine life and its importance for humanity. Today we are celebrating Med Coast Day, our beautiful Mediterranean Sea. We will be doing a guided snorkel. Adding a little bit of education to snorkeling only makes it more fun. I quite like this area personally. There is some patches of Posidonia oceanica, which is the scientific name for a species known as the Neptune grass. They are known as the lungs of the Mediterranean. They produce a lot of oxygen. They are a habitat for a lot of species. And not only this, but they also prevent erosion. It's my first time going guided snorkeling, so I was actually able to find out what I was actually looking at, rather than just going out and looking at the fish. I find like this is the perfect way to educate people. I think kids enjoy it, you know, I think people my age enjoy it. You know, there was even some people who were a little bit older than me, you know, I mean, it's great. Seems like an inclusive event to me. Thumbs up. <laughs> we also get, managed to get some trash, uh, some hooks, some plastic bags. This also ensures that we send this message to, to the public. And if we see any trash around, we take it with us. Such initiatives aim to improve public awareness about the ocean and how to look after the marine environment. Malta's ocean ambassador says most people are emotionally detached from such issues, but hopes action like this will help bridge the gap. So people can actually scan this QR code. As we know, Europe has a blue growth strategy that we need to generate more economic activity from the sea, but we must make sure that that uh, is done sustainably. And one way of doing that is to have more ocean literacy, not just for Joe citizen, for the men in the street, but also for policymakers. Because you would be amazed that some policymakers actually are very ocean illiterate. Improving so-called ocean literacy is a top priority for the EU-backed European Ocean Coalition. It connects a diverse range of organisations, projects and people and also develops educational programmes to help improve the public's knowledge and create debate about what's happening to our seas. The key lesson is to involve the people, make them understand at an early stage what the ocean means for our livelihood and our future. How can we not be knowledgeable enough and not, you know, committed enough to the planet's biggest asset on which we all depend. Children, students, media people, politicians, policy makers, everyone. Targeted local events known as Coast Days are seen as one way to engage the public, especially children, keen to learn about things like the marine food chain while playing a game. At a European level, EU for Ocean promotes ocean literacy in schools, supports youth projects and engages the public with the hashtag MakeEUBlue campaign. Themed exhibitions in museums, art centres and aquariums also play an important role to improve awareness. There's nothing in the world that actually decomposes plastic. What happens is that it becomes small, small, tiny particles, which is microplastics. Fishing nets, since they are made out of plastics, they stay there forever, so they're going to be fishing forever. The sea is in trouble and unfortunately people are not aware. One of the main messages that in my opinion aquariums, zoos in general should be spreading is exactly ocean literacy. You can have all of the beauty that there is, you can see how amazing all of these animals are, but at the same time, there's something that we need to do about it, especially for the younger generations. You might love it, you might find it amazing. If you don't fight for it, it's all going to be over very, very soon. From Malta to the Netherlands, and a pioneering social enterprise called the Sea Ranger Service is helping the young to embark on a maritime career. Founded in 2016 by Dutch conservationist Bitsy van der Werf, it offers them a chance to get a full year's sailing experience while also earning a salary. 
one of the things that the maritime industry really struggled with is to attract young people, young talent. So how do we inspire and motivate young people to choose a maritime career? Well, one of the ways is uh, by them starting as a sea ranger. The sea rangers spend roughly half of every month at sea. During the year, they learn theories such as marine cartography, sailing techniques and engine operation, while also working on environmental assignments. They work on this ship that you see behind me, which is a special sailing ship, so it's a very clean, very mission-free way to operate. And really, they carry out all types of assignments to do with research, uh, to do with the management and the restoration of, of nature at sea. Most of the new recruits have no sailing background. They learn the ropes with the help of their more experienced teammates and seasoned professionals. It all started with my love for the ocean. I love uh, scuba diving uh, and I started working as a lifeguard uh, and my friend uh, told me about the Sea Ranger service and I was sold. The team is really special, it already feels like family a little bit and I'm learning a lot because sailing was completely new for me. With only a few places available every year, competition to become a Sea Ranger can be tough. The candidates who do take the plunge are put through boot camp. Training led by military veterans focuses on team building, personal development and survival techniques. And we had to build a bridge and we all had to walk over it. And to me that really seemed impossible, but actually with the right plan, with the right teamwork, with the right efforts, in the end it worked out. The Sea Rangers perform paid maritime duties for Dutch government agencies, for instance, surveying protected areas or taking water samples to help monitor the health of the sea. The company says it's built a sustainable business model that reduces youth unemployment and protects the environment. It now has plans to grow internationally through a franchising model with the ambition to train 20,000 young people in the maritime sector by 2040. People from a number of countries, uh, most notably France and Spain and Greece around the Mediterranean, uh, but also uh, Estonia, uh, Finland, uh, Poland, around the Baltic Sea, are saying, hey, there's a model that can potentially make a difference, make impact here. So we're now in advanced talks with a number of these people uh, to see if we can implement the model there. From climate change and pollution to resource exploitation, our oceans face multiple challenges. But the hope is the more that people know about these problems, the more they'll take matters into their own hands to help turn the tide.